Hello and welcome to Carly Talks Music. This is a weekly vlog, video blog, where I talk about something musical for the week. And today is part two of my Mozart Mania trilogy. And today I'm going to be talking about what evidence points to really did actually kill Mozart, as well as talking about his Requiem and how it's not really his. Before we get started, I have a really awesome announcement to make <laughs> about my life, if you guys care about my life. I am actually going to Austria next week, like next Sunday. So like less than a week if you're watching this on Monday or if you're watching this before I leave, the less than a week. <laughs> For those of you that are also, you know, music, classical music buffs or know at least a bit about classical music composers, you'll know that Mozart actually was actually born and died in Austria. Uh, he was born in Salzburg and passed away in Vienna. And my family friend lives in Vienna and there's supposedly some awesome new Mozart museum. And I'm just super pumped. And I know there's more to Austria than Mozart. Like, I know that. And I'm excited to <clears throat> immerse or just see how people live because I've been in the United States my entire life and yeah I'm really excited it's gonna be great so quick reminder that what I did in my paper that I wrote for music history that this kind of Mozart mania trilogy is all about is that I critiqued an article written by a Peter Brown that talked about the historical discrepancies between Amadeus and Mozart's life and also just a reminder that Peter Schaefer, the one that, the guy that wrote the, 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 the play, versus Foreman, Milo's Foreman, who wrote, or who directed the movie Amadeus. They wanted to create a dramatized version based on a rumor in Mozart's life. That rumor being that he was poisoned, or basically that he was killed with a lot of help from Antonio Salieri. And if you go back and watch part one, you'll find whether or not that's true. <laughs> they didn't plan on making something that was completely based on fact. Schaefer even said, one of the faults which <clears throat> I believe existed in the London version of Amadeus was simply that Salieri had little, too little to do with Mozart's ruin. So, I mean, the takedown of a great composer sounds like, you know, an amazing story, right? Yeah. So, he, <laughs> he knew what he was doing. All right, moving on to what actually killed Mozart. So first, if you, in part one, we're ruling out the poisoning theory. Because you'll find out that, especially that Salieri had nothing to do with it, um, that they really didn't have any animosity between each other, and that they were basically just in competition because they're both composers in Austria, you know? So, just like, when you're competing against someone for a job position. Same thing happened with composers in that era because they were getting jobs as, you know, the state composer or the the composer in residence at, you know, big, uh, big political places, things like that. So ruling out the poisoning theory. Some people believed, or some researchers believed that it was kidney failure brought on by scholein hinnock syndrome. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'll put it, here's the actual word. Uh, it's in German. Hopefully when I'm in Austria, I can learn how to pronounce German better because I cannot pronounce German very well at all. Anyway, uh, but later there was a letter found in which Mozart described his symptoms towards the end of his life and they didn't really match up with that syndrome. Um, plus that syndrome usually only affects school-age children, and it was very rare or weird to even see those types of symptoms in an older, or, you know, an adult. So there's, there's a possibility that it could have been some sort of kidney failure. As an adult, Mozart didn't really keep track of his medical records, but as a child, his father, Leopold, kept very, very detailed records, especially when they were traveling all around Europe. And those letters, <clears throat> so Leopold would be writing those letters back to his wife when they were on their travels. And those letters showed that Mozart had rheumatic fever 
twice as a child. And unlike a lot of other diseases, such as, you know, if you get chicken pox when you're little, then you're most likely, in, there's, your immune system builds up so that you won't get it in adulthood. But when it comes to rheumatic fever, it's more of the opposite. If you contracted it as a child, you're more likely to contract it as an adult. Many of the symptoms that were described by his doctors or by him, uh, such as fever with a lot of sweating, uh, attacks on his tissues, which were initially his joints, uh, his wife Constance, as well as his uh, sister-in-law Constance's sister, sh or t had said that when he, like, his joints were so swollen that he couldn't move towards the end of his life, and so there's some evidence of the fact that he. The attacks on the tissues, which were a symptom of rheumatic fever, they initially started in his joints. So, keeping the rheumatic fever in mind, let's talk about the medical practices of Mozart's time. Back then, doctors believed that health was based on the balance of the four humors, which are blood, phlegm, yellow bile, and black bile. And different illnesses were caused by different balances in the humors. So because the doctors believed that his illness was caused by an excess of black bile, they did a lot of bloodletting during his treatment. So the theory is that the bloodletting actually could have caused a weakening in his body because you have less blood, you have less... You have less blood, so things don't travel where they're supposed to in your body at the right time, you know? So the bloodletting could have really weakened his body, which eventually led him to not be able to fight what was his fatal illness. So, conclusion here is that during my research, most of the evidence post posts <laughs> most of the evidence points. Can you see how much time I spent on the internet? <sighs> that <laughs> most of the evidence points to rheumatic fever as an adult. All right, so let's talk about the requiem. As for how it pertains to Amadeus, there wasn't really any evidence that Mozart believed that he was writing the Requiem for his father, which is what the, the anonymous sender, anonymous messenger person was supposed to portray, was like supposed to be, or what the character in Amadeus thought that the secret messenger that commissioned him to write the Requiem was his father. That's, that's the movie. That's the movie. But there's no evidence in real life that pointed to him writing it for his father. There's actually more evidence pointing to the fact that he thought he was writing it for himself. So, little tidbit there. Take with that what you want. The Requiem was actually commissioned anon anonymously by Count Walsleg Stupak for his wife, and the Count actually wanted to write off the work as his own and that's where Schaefer got the idea for like the secret messenger and people now know that he passed away Mozart passed away before he was able to finish the Requiem but Constance his wife did ask help from his contemporaries to help finish it the main composer that helped Finnish Requiem was Franz Xavier Sussmeier. <laughs> Again, German. Hopefully I'll get better when I go to Austria. <laughs> he actually had a letter that he wrote talking about his points uh, and why people didn't really contribute to, or why he thinks that a lot of people, a lot of Mozart's contemporaries didn't contribute to the Requiem and why he did. So a few of the points that Sussmeier made about his work on the Requiem were that Constance had first asked several masters to complete the work, but these had been unable to undertake it for various reasons, or that they were not prepared to put their own work at the side of Mozart's. Um, another reason that the request was finally made to him because he had often played and sung through the music with Mozart during the last weeks of his life, and Mozart had frequently talked to him about the detailed working, or talked to me, Sussmeyer, me, about the detailed working of his composition and explained to me the how and the wherefore of his instrumentation. So that's why Sussmeyer said that he was the one that did most of the work on the Requiem. But after he wrote that letter, he passed away 
three years after he wrote that letter, so he was never able to talk about it in person. He was never able to really talk about his contribution in the flesh. It also surfaced that he didn't, Mozart didn't begin working on his Requiem until after the premiere of The Magic Flute, which was on October 1st, 1791, and that was only two months before Mozart took to bed for his illness. So yeah, he was a genius, but I don't know, completing a full Requiem when you've come down with what eventually is going to be your fatal illness, not so likely that he's going to finish that on his own. Just, he was a great person, great composer, but Sometimes fatality just, I don't know, life is weird. Life is weird. So I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about Mozart. I know it's like, a lot of it's sad because it's about his death. But because of the movie Amadeus, I feel like there are more people that want to know whether or not this is, whether or not that movie is based on historical fact. So here's me telling you uh, uh like no great movie not historical fact so i hope that these videos show that i've actually done research on it and it's really interesting to me and i hope that it's interesting to some of you guys because i don't know why just i hope it's interesting to people i feel like knowing more about one of the greatest composers lives can give you more of an insight into, you know, how they created, and it's an amazing thing. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Tune in next week, which will actually, that video is going to air on Sunday because I am leaving for Europe on Sunday, and yeah, so next week I'm going to be just talking about the genius that really, like, the, the genius in Mozart that really drove him to do all these great things based on my research as well as just some fun random facts about Mozart. Just random shit. So if you have any questions that you want to know, that you want me to put in that video, send them to me as soon as you can because I'm going to need to record that video within the next couple of days so that I can get it ready for you guys before I leave for Europe. Which also means I'm going to have to take a hiatus from this for... Uh, I'm going to be there for two and a half weeks, so... For about two and a half weeks, I'm going to be taking a hiatus from the blog. But while I'm there, don't you worry, I'm going to be recording as much as I can. I'm just going to come back with a shit ton of footage so that I can share it with you guys and share my experience. Thanks again so much for watching.